Hey everyone, welcome back to the Catalyst 9800 101 series. My name is Justin Liu, a technical marketing engineer here in Cisco's Enterprise Network Wireless BU. Last time, we covered how to create a WLAN using the Advanced Setup Workflow. And today, in episode 4 of the series, we'll be covering how to enable application visibility, and then use that to create an app-based QoS policy, and then we'll verify this QoS policy. Afterwards, we'll enable local profiling for device classification, and then use that to create a local profiling policy which will apply different policies based on device type, and finally we'll verify the local policy. So before we get started, let's go over exactly what Application Visibility and Control, or AVC, is. AVC is the Cisco leading approach for deep packet inspection technology in wireless and wired products. It leverages the network-based application recognition engine, which will allow us to identify applications using the Layer 7 signatures, and this can run on either the APs or controllers. The results are then reported via flexible NetFlow messages and are aggregated by the WLC. The WLC can also act as an internal flow collector, as well as export these NetFlow messages to external collectors such as Cisco Prime. Within the WLC UI, users can view statistics about the different application performance over an interval of time. Additionally, with application visibility enabled, users can then define control rules with policing mechanisms at client level, such as through app-based QoS policies. So now, let's hop onto the WLC to see how we can enable this. Okay, now that we're in the web UI of the 9800, let's enable application visibility. To do this, we'll go to Configuration, Services, Application Visibility. To enable application visibility, we'll need to select the wireless policy profile in which to enable this. In my case, I'm going to select Local Policy. This was the wireless policy profile we created last episode in the Advanced WLAN section. So to do this, we'll click the blue arrow next to local policy to move it to the enabled section. And then we'll ensure that the checkbox under visibility is checked. And then for local, I'm gonna ensure that box is checked as I'm gonna be using the WLC as a local flow collector. But if you're also using an external flow collector, check the box next to external and then input the IP address of your flow collector. But here I'm gonna uncheck external and then click apply. And now we can see the configuration was successfully applied, so application visibility is now enabled. So now let's verify that application visibility is up and running correctly. To do this, we'll go to the dashboard and check if a client is connected to the Pod1 PSK WLAN, which is associated to the local policy wireless policy profile. So if you click on clients, we can see indeed we have a client connected to the Pod1 PSK. So now let's go to monitoring, services, Application Visibility. And on this page, you can select the wireless clients that connect to your network, but in my case there's only one, and then view the different types of applications that are being run, as well as which one's being used the most or the least, and get different statistics as well on the different applications. So now that we've enabled and verified application visibility, let's now create an app-based QoS policy. So to do this, we'll go to Configuration, Services, QoS. And today we'll create a QoS policy that will block YouTube.com and any YouTube services. So to do this, we'll click add, and then again, we'll go to policy name and name the policy YouTube block. Next, we'll go to add class maps and leave AVC slash user defined as AVC, match as all, mark type as none. Next, we'll check the box next to drop. And then for the match type, we'll choose protocol. And in the available protocols, we'll search for YouTube. We'll select YouTube and click the right arrow to move to the selected protocol section and click save. And now any YouTube traffic will be dropped. And to apply this QoS policy to local policy, we'll click the right arrow to move to the selected section and ensure the box under ingress is checked. So what this means is that the QoS policy will be applied to traffic sent from a wireless source to a wired target. So to save this, we'll click apply to device. But before we do so, let's first verify that youtube.com is indeed working on a wireless client, in this case, my iPhone. So now that I'm on my iPhone, let's go to the Cisco WLAN YouTube channel. And as we can see, we can access the YouTube channel. So now let's go back to the WLC and then apply this QoS policy and try this again. So in the add QoS window, I'm going to click apply to device. 
So because we've applied the QoS policy, any clients associated to the local policy wireless policy profile will lose connectivity. So we'll wait for these clients to rejoin our network. So now we're back and the iPhone has reconnected back to our network. So I'm going to open up a new tab and try to access the Cisco WLAN YouTube page once more. And now it looks like we're not able to connect to YouTube.com. And eventually this request will time out and will be redirected to a cannot connect page. So I'm going to speed up the video until we reach the cannot connect page. So now the request has timed out and we've been redirected to Safari could not open the page because the server stopped responding verifying that our QoS policy blocking YouTube.com indeed works. So now let's go enable local profiling for device classification on our WLC. Local profiling allows for the device type of the wireless clients that join the network to be noted. And using this device type, networked admins can create local profiling policies which can apply different access policies for device types. For example, one device type can be put into VLAN 2 with QoS policy 2, while another device type can be put into VLAN 3 with QoS Policy 3. To classify the devices locally, the 9800 uses the OUI portion of the device MAC address, as well as HTTP and DHCP profiling. For more information, please see the link in the description below. So now let's hop into the web UI and see how we can enable local profiling and create these local policies. So now that we're back in the web UI of the 9800, let's enable local profiling so that we can see the device types for the different wireless clients that are connected to our network. So first, we currently have one client connected to our network, so we'll click in one on the active. And here we can see that the device type is not available, but I know for a fact my device is an iPhone. So to enable local profiling, we'll go to Configuration, Wireless, Wireless Global. And here in the box next to Device Classification, we'll check it and click apply. So now that local profiling has been successfully enabled, let's go verify that my device is now being correctly classified as an iPhone. So to do this, we'll go to monitoring wireless clients. So now we can see that the MAC address of the client as well as the IP address are the same. And now the device type shows Apple device as opposed to not available. Also, if we go back to the main dashboard and scroll all the way down to the client device type section, we can get a graphical breakdown for the different types of devices that are joined to our network. Currently, there's only one device type shown here as there's only one client connected to our network. If other clients join the network, their device types will also populate this section. So let me go join other devices to our network and I'll be back. So now that I'm back, I've connected two other devices to our wireless network. I've connected an Apple iPad, which is at .11.16, and it's been classified as an Apple device, and also a Google Pixel at .11.14, and this has been classified as a Linux workstation. And now with the iPhone, it's now been classified as an Apple iPhone as opposed to an Apple device. So now we can view the different types of devices on the monitoring page. So if we go to Monitoring, Services, Local Profiling, we can get a breakdown of different devices that are joined to our network. So we have an Apple iPhone, Apple device, and a Linux workstation. And on the right side, we get an exact count for the different types of devices that are joined to our network. So we have one of each type. So now let's configure a local policy using the device type. So to do this, we'll go to configuration, security, local policy. And here we'll create a new service template. So our service template, which we'll name iPhone, will define what type of access policies will apply for the device type. So in this case, I'm going to apply a VLAN ID of 2 and click Apply to Device. So now to actually map the service template to be applied to specific devices, we'll have to create a policy map. So we'll go to the Policy Map section and click Add. And here in the Policy Map name, we'll name this Apple iPhone. And in the Match Criteria list, we'll click Add to create a new match list. And here for the service template, we'll select our created iPhone service template. And in the device type, we'll choose equals Apple iPhone. Then we'll click add criteria to save the mapping and click apply to device. So now that we've created the policy map, we'll now need to apply this to our local policy wireless policy profile. So to do this, we'll go to configuration, tags and profiles, policy. And here we'll select the local policy policy profile. 
we'll go to the access policy tab and then under local subscriber policy name, we'll select the Apple iPhone policy map we created and click update and apply to device. This will cause all our devices to lose connectivity to our network and they'll have to rejoin. So I'll come back once our devices have rejoined the network. So now that the devices have rejoined our network, we can see that the Apple iPad has maintained the IP address of .11.16 and device type of Apple device. As well as the Pixel, it's still .11.14. But now, if you look at the iPhone, its IP address is now .2.11. So if we select this, and go to General tab, and again go to the Security Information sub-tab, we can see that the service template of iPhone has been applied, and it's now on VLAN 2. So now if we select any of the other devices, so like the Apple iPad, we can see that the iPhone service template has not been applied and it's still on the management VLAN, so VLAN ID 11. And this is the case for the Google Pixel as well. So if we select this, we can verify that the VLAN name is management and VLAN ID 11, indicating that our local policy has indeed worked. And with that, we've come to the end of episode 4 of the 9800-101 series. In summary, we've enabled application visibility, use that to create an app-based QoS policy, verify that QoS policy, and then we enabled local profiling for device classification on our WLC, and use that to create a local policy that will be applied to different device types, and then verify that local policy. Please join us next time, where we'll go over the detailed steps to define a secure employee WLAN, as well as a guest WLAN. And if you found this video helpful and informative, please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day.